Hello and welcome to this Policy Watch special on the Prime Minister's visit to the United States and particularly Silicon Valley. His visit to Ireland and the United States dominated the news space this week. From an economic standpoint, the biggest focus is how much investment can the Prime Minister bring to the government's flagship programs, Digital India and Make in India. But more importantly, how can we build real sustainable bridges between India and Silicon Valley? Here's a report. A grand welcome in New York on Prime Minister Modi's second visit here. Alongside the strategic aspect of the seven-day U.S. visit, there's a strong economic angle too. Support from U.S. industry captains for his flagship programs Make in India, Digital India and Infrastructure Projects, among others. Soon after his arrival, Modi held roundtable meetings with CEOs of some Fortune 500 companies, including Cisco, Boeing, IBM and Ford. He also met media barons. He got from them some optimism on India's growth story, but also a demand for a speeding up of the reforms process. Prime Minister heard from each and every one of them on what their plans for India were, uh, what are the problems that they were facing, how we could resolve them. And by and large, the mood was very upbeat. Uh, there was general consensus that the Prime Minister you know, uh, is affecting change in India. The only, uh, the only thing that all the CEOs said is, please make that change faster. Modi seeks an investment of up to $100 billion. Railways, power, renewable energy and others need huge doses of investing and they can come best from global giants with expertise in these areas. Towards uh, inducing, influencing uh, US investors to look at India more positively, invest in our infrastructure and also can some partnerships be developed between US firms and Indian firms whereby Indian firms can benefit from the very high technology which is embodied in some of the firms in United States. With a visit to the US West Coast and Silicon Valley, Modi also becomes the first Indian Prime Minister to visit the offices of the US's top innovators and IT startups. Besides the direct pitch, there's also an effort to channelize the energy of the Indian diaspora to development back home. Krishnanand Tripathi's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, let's understand this a little better. I'm joined by Ranjit Nair of Germinate Solutions, a social media intelligence company. Sudarshan Ravi Ripple hired a new age hiring company. Both are volunteers of iSpirit, the product software association. I'm also, of course, joined by Manjit Kriplani, founder of Gateway House and a journalist as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Manjit, let me begin with you. The visit seems to have got off to a good start. Uh, the Prime Ministers met with a whole bunch of CEOs on the East Coast, but they, however, pointed out issues which must have been pointed out in the previous visit with, uh, too. So the question is, what has changed since then? Um, a lot. Mm. I think India has moved into a position of being in the, in the pit to actually reaching the starting point. That has been a huge journey. Okay. Can we you define now, that a little more? Well, I think that processes have been put in place. So first, there was a trust factor with the U.S. that really the U.S. lost our, mm. our they lost faith in India over the last two decades because we promised so much. Mr. Modi, from whom they had no expectations, seems to have delivered. He's not afraid of coming forward and saying, okay, this is what we could do. He's a perpetual salesman for India, for mm. India and he's been pushing. He's now ready. He's more realistic. Mm. And I think he is now saying, all right, we've undone the uh, distortions in our economy and now we're going to be ready to receive. Mm. You have to also be ready to receive. So I think we are now at that starting point where we are ready to start walking together with people and being ready to receive. Okay, so can and I that, ask you to define that too? When you say ready to receive, uh, what would have so, changed so much? So here? regulations, first and foremost, mm. those regulations have been really bad. We finally got Arun Jaitley to, to say that there's going to be no uh, retrospective taxation. This is a big step forward. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Modi has had battles to fight at home, one of them being OROP, etc. There are lessons in this in which India can prepare itself for the future as well. So he's fought a lot of battles and uh, people are watching these domestic battles and saying yes, he can now fight the battles externally. Uh, I think he himself, because he's so technologically oriented, he himself has understood the role that technology plays. So he's always given uh, a, a hearing to heads of technology companies. He's also started giving a hearing to heads of project management companies. So there's a company called AECOM. They said this is going to be the big infrastructure build out of India. He is prepared and ready for that. Um, these are not very visible. But these are things that are preparatory for 
now that India for India to now start gearing up to play a big role uh, in Silicon Valley for instance I think it's no longer about optics it's no longer going to be about the crowd uh, it's now about what we can do so the meeting already with Kerry and Shushma Swaraj and Sita Raman and Penny Pritzker has been about all the 20 things that we can do there are I think more than a hundred things on the agenda with the strategic and commercial dialogue at the moment they have to decide which things are doable mm. and which things are not right. the problem is that India and, and the US are not really at the same level the US is ready to go with all hundred things we are ready to go with only 10 right. we okay. have to so be like realistic we'll, about that we'll talk about that in a little detail and of course the valley part so uh, Ranjit you've been picking up some trends already uh, through your company and the work that you do on your platform tell us about that so essentially what we do is we pick up what the conversations around any topic mm. and in this case we're trying to pick up conversations around the Mo Modi's visit to the US what we're finding is that when we compare the kind of sentiment that there was around his visit last year mm. to the kind of sentiment there is this year we find that the sentiment has changed a little bit while last year the sentiment was largely positive overwhelmingly positive this year there is a healthy balance between positive views and negative views. Mm -hmm. We're finding it split right down the middle. Mm -hmm. So about 14% of the views are negative, around another 14% are positive. So when you say negative, uh, in your understanding, does it mean that expectations of the past not delivered or is it about expectations of the present uh, not sounding strong so enough? It's a, it's a combination of both. It's for, on the one hand, there are people who are saying that yes, there were a lot of things that were promised earlier, which we haven't yet seen action on the ground. So policies which we, people were hoping that would would come about and get announced. Maybe it would be announced on this visit, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But they, these were kind of things that there was certain expectation that was built up. And there is a bit of a fear that they may not deliver what they promised. Any example that comes so, from this? I mean, from your so, studies? Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that's, uh, that comes up quite prominently amongst the negative themes um, is that there is a fear amongst a few people that um, with Facebook mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, uh, Google. and Google yeah. being part of internet.org mm. uh, and this would actually be at a detriment to uh, Indian startups who invariably have to compete with the likes of Facebook and Google. Mm -hmm. So they worry that uh, Modi's visit could see some sort of an announcement that Google and Facebook would be uh, and, the go and government services would suddenly become available on internet.org mm. And this could be make the level the, the playing field not as level as it should right, be. Right, yeah, that's a, and that's a good point. Okay, anything that you're sort of before we jump into the valley angle. Sure. So I'll tell you, um, you have to understand that typically our prime minister when he goes to most economies, uh, he's introducing India, right, which he's already done last year. Whereas the Silicon Valley, which is where he's going to next is already far ahead than most other economies. Mm. They already believe in the India growth story. Mm. And if you're going to a place which already believes in the India growth story... And has then so many Indians as well. Uh, and has such there, a large yeah. Indian diaspora yeah. there which already believes in it and has been wanting to participate in it for a while. I guess the story, you know, or where I think there's a lot of neutrality or, uh, or there is cautious optimism, is what I would put it, is in the fact that we want to see action. And mm. I think where they want to see action is believe in the story can we look at the processes or the policies we need to do so we can actually take action mm. and you know participate in the story mm. so uh, while a lot of the prior visits have been about believing in the story mm. this particular visit i think or you know where the the entire visit should be hinged about is about making sure that right. people participate in the story and getting the hurdles out of the way for that right so you've worked in the us uh, mm -hmm. and you've come back i don't know if the uh, sequentially it was sort of you left and came back to start something in india but mm -hmm. but you do you've seen two work environments H how do you look at a visit like this i mean in terms of let's say boosting enthusiasm of people like you who were there and mm -hmm. may come back mm -hmm. though already many have sure so uh, I mean, to, to answer your first part, yes, I actually came back and mm. I set up a company here. So, uh, when we, when I was in the US, right, there's always a strong element of bonding and patriotism, though you're resident in a different country. Mm. So, a visit by a leader does definitely, you know, bring all those emotions to the fore. Mm. Uh, you want to do your bit for the country. Mm. Um, and I think that particular sentiment got captured really strongly the last time he was there, okay. right? Mm. So, this time around, it's more of... Yes, I believe in the story mm. um, and I want to do my bit, but can I do it, you know, can we get to doing it, okay. right? Because the and, and drilling down to what exactly you could be doing and whether or not I might face hurdles or not. Correct. And also if you look at it, you know, the, the US culture or, you know, if you look at it specifically, mm. it tends to move at a much faster pace mm. than India. Mm. So you're pumped up, you're charged, you want to do your bit, 
but you're not willing to wait that long to be able to deliver. Right. That's the difference. Right. And that perhaps links to what Ranjit was saying is that slight sort of perception uh, imbalance. Manjit, do you want to sort of respond with fact perhaps on that? Uh, with a fact on the imbalance. So I think that the tech industry, as you said, is so way ahead. Mm -hmm. The expectations are higher than anybody else's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, technology with the US and India is not really about the dot com only. Mm -hmm. Technology is about so many other things. It's about pharma. It's about manufacturing. It's about agriculture. All these things are actually on the strategic dialogue discourse. Mm -hmm. They're on the agenda. There's been no conversation from Silicon Valley about these things. Mm -hmm. There has been no conversation about healthcare. Mm -hmm. India has, I think, is the the largest pharma supplier of generic medicines to the world. Uh, the US is opposed to it. Okay, These are areas where India and the US can work together for humanity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be an India-US dialogue. None of this has been discussed at all. Mm. Uh, India has a growing uh, medical... But, and that's a discussion which would happen on the East Coast and not on the West Coast, right? No, it ought to be happening on the West Coast. Okay. It is what is happening. It's getting resistance from the East Coast from Washington mm. because all the big pharma companies really don't want mm. uh, the generic makers to, to participate. Mm. But what is happening in India, there is, I think, a, uh, a now coming together of both uh, pharma, generics, drugs, biotechnology, in which is the West Coast mm. is very good at and uh, medical devices, affordable medical devices. Mm. These can all really work to the good and mm. this is where the NRI community comes in. Mm. They understand this very well. They understand the challenges of development even if the US doesn't and India also has a very active social enterprise uh, industry here. Mm. We need to put all these things together and the NRIs can play a huge role. What also can play a large role, Mr. Modi has met all the CEOs of companies. I don't know how much he discussed with them their CSR um, uh, plans mm. for India because the US, unlike Indian companies for which CSR is you know, something absolutely new, in the United States CSR has been done for many years and they've perfected the art. Mm. We can learn a lot from American CFR, uh, CSR. We can also learn a lot from American philanthropy, which must be put into these social enterprises. Right. This is so we need to coalesce all these, and Indian Americans are the perfect, uh, the perfect conduit for this. Right. But and, and of course, when you say Indian Americans, it goes much beyond technology Absolutely. and into a lot of other areas. Absolutely. Like some of which seven, you pointed out. That's yeah. right. Seven percent of the physicians in the United States are are of Indian origin. Um, you know, the n largest number of nurses after Filipino nurses are Indian nurses in the mm. U.S. This is a huge community that we can pull together using technology, using social media mm. and start thinking about solutions for the world. Okay. So, okay, to Ranjit's point, why do you, do you see that sort of perceptional imbalance uh, between the previous visit and the current? I don't see it. Mm. I th as I said, I think the hype is now quietened down. Mm. I think the reality now has to come and Mr. Modi is making this trip to Silicon Valley to to uh, make people understand, learn what they can give and tell them what he wants. Mm. What he did very effectively and the NRIs are forgetting because you know once a hurdle is crossed and becomes normalcy, uh, everyone forgets <laughs> about it and that's the passport system yeah. and, uh, and visas. Mm. It has become so easy, it, the e-visa, it takes, it takes a minute for anybody to come to India now, it's really easy. These are huge, huge steps in making it easier for Americans to come to India, for technologists to come into India. And so there's no, I, I didn't hear the word H1B mentioned anywhere. Exactly. So far. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. And so that is off the table because the H1B hmm. visa system is really about very few Indian companies that want to send their people. Once you start getting American expertise into India and Indian expertise into America, then the, the corridor really becomes meaningful. Right. Oh, that's a good note to uh, take a break and we'll come back and talk about the bridge between uh, maybe Bengaluru and uh, the valley or India and the valley. Stay with us. You're with Policy Watch. Hello and welcome to India's World. Every time there is internal political polarization in Nepal, Indian policy becomes the punching bag. You know, we are used for the last 50 years of dealing only with the power brokers, either here or there. The relationships have gone to such an extent, it's a point of no return and all that. I don't think Nobody's so. Nobody saying that. I don't but think so. What experts debate protests in Nepal with Bharat Bhushan in India's world on Rajya Sabha Television.
Welcome back here with Policy Watch. Prime Minister Modi goes to the valley. What can he achieve? What should he be looking at or trying to get out of this uh, momentous visit? Well, uh, Ranjit, let me begin with you. So, you know, we talked about what, you know, technology bridges could be built. So, talk, take us through some of the potentials that you see between these two countries or our two, our nation and uh, America, particularly when you start looking at the valley and the big companies there. Sure. Uh, I think the first point I'd like to make is that most of the new age companies which we view as successes mm. worldwide didn't exist 20 years ago. Mm. Uh, they're, they're, these have all come up, these are new companies that have come up and have been able, they've been able to foster because of the kind of environment that was mm. created. Any company, if you wanted to create that same kind, of, uh, same kind of company, that same kind of culture here in India, where you can answer questions like, okay, does India have an answer to Google, does India have an answer to Facebook, it requires that uh, there is a startup culture here which relies on three things. One is there should be a good amount of funding available to startups. Mm. The second is access to know-how and the third is access to talent. Now when you talk about a technology a bridge between the two countries we're really hoping that there would be a bridge that addresses these three parts that makes it easy for Indian startups to access funds, that makes it easy for Indian startups to access global talent and makes it easy for Indian startups to access know-how. Okay. So that's really what we're hoping for. Right. Uh, Sudarshan? Sure. So I think, you know, he hit the nail on the head. Mm. I think those are three areas that would really help uh, from an Indian startup ecosystem standpoint. Mm. Um, I so are you saying that we learn need to learn generically from what's going on there or is there, are there sort of specific bridges that we can build? And, and we'll sure. talk about innovation in a little bit. Sure. So if we talk about specific bridges, mm. right, let's take one area. Mm. Let's take the area of capital, mm. right? I think um, the easiest way to transfer knowledge mm. or mm. build a stronger bridge mm. is to have people in that ecosystem invested mm. in companies here, mm. right? That's the easiest way to do it. And if you have to look at the specifics of it, then I think the, the key aspect is capital. Mm. Uh, when you're invested in something, you're naturally passing your know-how, making the connections. And if you look at the valley, it's beautiful that there are people out there who sit in one corner in an office in San Francisco and build products for the world. Mm. And the same know-how can be passed on to do that either in Bangalore, in Mumbai, in any city for that matter in India. Mm. Mm. And for that specifics, I think a, a major facet would be uh, the ability uh, or looking at the capital gains tax piece of it. Mm. I think uh, right now the restrictions that are being placed mean that individual angels, people who have actually helped, who have been the first few mm. employees at a Facebook, at a Google, yeah. uh, are unable to transfer that knowledge because they are unable to you know, invest in an individual capacity. Mm. Which means that a lot of that know-how uh, gets lost or people do not have that access to. Okay. And I think that's one specific area that would definitely enable it. Mm. Yeah, Manjit and then I come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that um, the US-India nuclear, civilian nuclear deal is very important. It's part of technology and technology transfers are a very important part of this. Uh, it will uh, also facilitate uh, transfer of technology in Silicon Valley as well. This really has to be closed. It's gone on for too long. It's been seven years now and now the real deliverable will, will come on the US-India civilian nuclear deal. Uh, it won't, may not be discussed in Silicon Valley but certainly there will be talk about technology transfer. Sure. The US has to be more generous about that because otherwise what he says is never going to happen. It's not just about tax. Right. And so the US also has to learn to look at things from the Indian viewpoint a little bit. We're not an advanced country and we're not China. But we have different skills and different strengths and we can innovate for the world in a way that the US cannot. Okay, they can do the innovation at the cream at right. the top. So do you see sort of greater opportunity world. for yes, institutionalization absolutely. of this? Yes, yeah. yes, I do. And that's where again US philanthropy comes in and that's where the institutionalization of um, of the NRI contribution to India come in. They should bring those skills to help create the ecosystem of innovation in India. Right now everyone says where are the entrepreneurs etc. Actually India is full of entrepreneurs because people don't have jobs. They're mm. all self-starters mm. and we are full of, they're, they're forced to do everything themselves, finance, marketing, everything. We have to, we may not be able to create 10 million jobs a year but we can create 10 million entrepreneurs and this is, these are the kind of exchanges that have to take place over the next 15 months they have to be um, activated. Right. So, right. Sudarshan, go ahead. Yeah. Just to, I, I completely agree with that. I think if you look at, you know, the point, Silicon Valley has always been focused on the first billion, mm. right? And India has potential to go beyond the first billion That's to the right. seven billion. That's and right. together, if we build this bridge, we can essentially innovate for the world. And 
opportunity so that's out there. Give me an example of how we could build this bridge. So, because sure. all of what you talked about is happening in some way. There are people investing. There are, of course, big uh, valley uh, ec private equity and venture capital firms investing with a base in India, in Delhi, in Bangalore, mm -hmm. Mumbai. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's already happening, right? But what sure. we are, I guess, hoping is how do you really scale it up? No, so I think, uh, let me kind of, I, I don't agree with that okay. point and I'll, I'll tell you why. Mm. Because what happens with venture capital funds is, what a venture capital fund does is it collects money from say 1000 people, mm. right? Whether it's a social enterprise, whether it's a, it's a you know, venture capital fund on for profit. The know-how that those 1000 people have, it's not just the money, mm. right? Sure. And what happens is, uh, they have a portfolio of firms here, which is probably 20, 30, 50 firms. So the amount of time they can necessarily dedicate is not as high. Mm. Whereas if you have individual angels, which is one step before in the ecosystem, where the companies are just starting out, you know, you have all these entrepreneurs who are at their earlier stages. Mm. Uh, if you look at it, 80 to 90% of startups die. Mm. And a lot of them die because they don't have the knowledge to succeed. Mm. And all I'm asking for is if we can get these individual angels to come in and contribute, we will see the success rate go up. And if you see the success rate go up, you know, today we have four or five unicorns in the, in the top 20. It's very easy that we could be, you know, 10 to 15 unicorns. So 15 are, are unicorns are billion dollar companies for exactly, the benefit exactly, of our audience. Exactly, right? Yeah. So that's, you know, and each of those billion dollar companies is then, in, you know, providing so many more jobs. You have Flipkart today, which is, you know, about 10,000 people working for them. Mm. That's a huge number. And I think that's a great way to make jobs. And all of this comes in, not just because of the money. It's because you have individual angels who've done this before, mm. who are sharing their know-how, not just and, the And capital. what you're clearly saying is that there is a potential to scale it up way beyond what we are currently seeing. Oh, absolutely. Because we I see a lot already. I mean, I know you disagree, but I, I, yeah. I just wanted to add one point, which I, I think everything that Manjeet and uh, Sudarshan said are, are bang on. I just think it would be mis a mistake to rely on philanthropy. Mm. Uh, everyone has, there's a sense of, there should be a vested self-interest in this. And that means that these angels who are advising companies should be able to invest in these companies. I would, I mean, I would give an hour or two, maybe a, a week or a month, if I, just out of the goodness of my heart. But if I've actually invested in that company, I'm bound to give much more time and much more know-how. Mm -hmm. So this ability to actually allow individuals to invest, individuals who have knowledge and capability to in invest, is actually going to be what the, the right. driver of innovation here in right. India. And just to add to that, iSpirit has been actively working with the government and you know putting forth the point that in the 2013 Companies Act, uh, it's been very hard to give away you know some kind of advisor equity you mm. know uh, equity that you give away shares that you give away for free mm. to some of these advisors mm. and it's usually not for the money it's done you know in good faith that they will help you grow and this uh, the 2013 act makes it increasingly difficult mm. for companies to be able to give this away right okay so let's talk about the pot at the end of the uh, rainbow uh, sure. you know which is really to say that can we create this whole valley ecosystem in india sure. a question that's been asked many times in the past uh, Manjit, do you want to go Absolutely. first? Absolutely, and beyond, mm. uh, because India has a different sense of what being an entrepreneur is, mm. and that sense is very, very close to the ground. Uh, so yes, we can be the model for entrepreneurship in parts of the world that the US is not, mm. uh, which is the developing world, and there are many entrepreneurs, as you know, we learned about mobile banking from Africa. Mm. There are lots of lessons to be learned, so if India, if India achieves the model for achievability uh, India as an achievable entrepreneurial goal is much more reachable than America so you know um, I don't know Addis Ababa can more easily be Mumbai than it can be Singapore mm -hmm. and that's this kind of but can we, we have to, a, the we need to get more in, on in the ground yes the yeah. valley culture there will be high there mm. will be high value valley culture like there's high culture mm. and there will be low valley culture like there's low culture but there will also be a very particular and unique Indian culture mm. and that is what will grow and that is what will spread. And, and that you say is in some ways will make up the larger component of yes, what it, will create the entrepreneurial Yes, it will ecosystem. because India India is not, uh, India has its own civilization, it ho its own needs so and its own characteristics. What can this visit do, the, uh, the Prime Minister's visit to the Valley do to nurture this concept that you're talking about? He will, I think that he will convey to people what it is that he would like for them to do and what he will assure them to do. Um, 
I think assuring the U.S. you have to do a trade-off with the U.S. They understand that very well because they're very good negotiators, and American Indians in the U.S. understand that too. Um, I think you have to trade off manufacturing, open the doors for American manufacturing in India, and uh, tell people that there will be a more open policy. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly. India has to be able to learn from the United States and it's all not only because the US is coming, it has to go beyond dot com, it really does, it has to go with the shared goals for a younger population, health care is very critical, environment is very critical, um, you know, shared um, uh, issues of disaster relief are very critical. When, when you talk about philanthropy, that's what I mean. You can put these philanthropy to good use because it's already Tech Valley philanthropy. It's not any other kind of philanthropy. Right. So I, I mean, think Tech Valley philanthropy Modi, is pretty structured and, and very organized. It, it is. But uh. all I'm saying is they can put it to these kind of issues yeah. where the US and Indra, India both have right. a global interest. Right. Okay. So we're running out of time. Quick words from all of you. Uh, uh, Ranjit, let me begin with you. Uh, what's been, what's sort of unfinished here now at this point? What are the big challenges which perhaps might get kind of, you know, spilled over to the next visit or in the future so I think the we, we, we're hoping very cautiously hopeful that there will be some policy changes announced which will make it easy and you expressed your concern yeah. about Google Facebook and so on yeah uh, so policy changes both in to make investments easy for into India uh, things that will make ensure that there's a level playing field for Indian companies as well as American Americans who want to come to mm -hmm. India and also making sure that there are no deterrents for setting up shop in India, okay. so we're hoping that these are the, there are actual some actual announcements which happen hmm. around these uh, okay. three areas. Uh, I think uh, you know if Mr. Modi in this trip um, is able to announce something on the policy front, hmm. which gets uh, the act of investments into India, hmm. right? Because they believe in the India story. I think that will be great. Hmm. Then the next trip can be about philanthropy and enabling you know facets mm. uh, beyond self-interest too mm. right um, i think that would be a, a big plus mm. and i honestly believe that uh, if we can imbibe some of the speed of execution that exists in the valley mm. and bring that to india uh, i think it will be fantastic because the snowball effect that it will occur in mm. terms of either creating a right. valley like culture here mm. or uh, you know implementing and, and, uh, and the one thing that uh, mr modi should tell mark zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the one thing, uh. right? I think you know, Facebook does all its engineering in uh, in the US. I think mm. he needs to tell Mr. Zuckerberg that hey, we've got okay. just as good, if not better, people here. Okay. Yeah. You may want I to thought you would say something here. about like and dislike, but anyway, <laughs> uh, Majid, last word, uh, unfinished the last pending. Word, unfitting agenda. I think the US has a lot of lawyers. They can help us write our e-commerce laws. Mm. They can help us write the more advanced technology laws because we need them. Uh, we don't have the skills, and right away, that's. That is what U.S. lawyers should be doing instead of trying to put uh, put up hurdles in India's way. Right. So we've got a whole variety of uh, suggestions and and thoughts that uh, the Prime Minister should be looking at, not just for this trip but for yes. the next trip as well. Yes. And of course, more importantly, uh, building very strong bridges between uh, uh, Valley Indians uh, and of course Valley technologists and uh, the rest of India to help solve some of the most fundamental problems yes. that we face. We've run out of time on Policy Watch. We'll be back next week, same time. Thanks for watching.